going to be out of out of window. I don't care. Right? Sure, and we're live on Bamboozer as well. So if anybody wants to tweet that we're live on Bamboozer, just send them to the Inner House uh, tweet, uh, Twitter feed, Inner House. And the Bamboozer link is there to pick up the live feed. If you want to tweet out to your networks. Good to go. Yeah, good to go. Yeah. So it's, it's great to be here. Uh, um, to, to, to talk about what we are doing at Vivaldi and what we've done before. So thanks for t taking the time and thanks for setting this up. Um, yeah. You want to you want to start? Sure. Um, so I'm the editor of Itavisen, a uh, Norwegian uh, tech news site, and uh, I got invited here to interview John, um, uh, primarily for the browser and um, a little bit about the startup culture too. Makes sense, right? Sure. So let's dive into uh, the browser. Why make a browser again? I think, uh, I mean, in some ways you may say, I don't really know how to do anything else, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, started doing browser in 1994 and uh, I mean, had a bit of a break there for a while. Um, and I mean, I, it has to be said, when I, when I quit Opera, I was not thinking about building another browser. I know how difficult it is. I mean, I worked with a lot of very talented people and we had to have a, a big group of people to build a browser. Um, and I was very proud of what we achieved as a company and as a team and with everyone around the team, it, it was, was fantastic. But then something changed, right? So d during this time, so I, I quit the company and, and it was really, a, a, I quit Opera because we had disagreements with the investors of, about kind of where we're gonna take this company. and. I mean, they really wanted to sell it and it was an ongoing process for seven years where they really wanted to sell it and I wanted to build it. And uh, I guess they wore me out, I got tired of, of, of dealing with this and I quit the company. Um, I was then thinking about what do I do now? I um, spent six months evaluating where I wanted to live. Uh, we decided as a family it was now time to, to try something different. We've been doing the same thing for uh, 17 years and, and we, we liked the idea of going somewhere else. So we, we decided to move to the US. Uh, I started working with a number of startups. I, I was setting up the innovation house in, 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 in Iceland and then the innovation house in, in the US. And the thought of building a browser was uh, pretty far away. I think very, very, very far away from my thoughts. But then something happened. And what happened was that uh, Opera decided to throw away all the work we had done. So 17 years of work down the drain. We had built one of the few companies in the world that had built a browser from scratch. Uh, and they decided to throw that away. And that's a decision, and which I think it was a very bad decision, but it's a decision that in practice was taken as soon as I went out of the door as a CEO in the beginning of 2010, they started defunding the, the core browser project which after a while, if you don't fund your projects enough, they're going to get rotten. I mean, code rots after a while, right? So that's one of the decisions. The second decision was to throw away the user interface and go for a different set of users. They had the, the, the thinking that, uh, you know what, we need to reach a bigger group of people, let's simplify, let's be like the others. Um, the thing was, we had a set of people that was using Opera and they loved the features that we had. They were really passionate. Anyone can tell you that the Opera users were the most passionate you can find. And they were very distraught. I mean, they, they were really unhappy about this situation. And they were asking, can't you do something? And the, the team in Norway, I tried to talk to them. Are you going to do something? Are you, are you going to build in the old features? Are you going to do the browser as it used to be? Are you going in the direction of just simplification? And, after a while of discussing with them, I understood it's, it's not going to happen. They're not going to uh, build a, a full-blown browser again. The mail client that was built in was kind of put on a, a back burner. There was no one working on it. So there was that a question, okay, what do we do now? And as a decision, we decided to build another browser. So we're building this browser 
I mean, we, we talk about building a browser for our friends, and there's a lot to that. Those people, these passionate Opera users, they are our friends. They really loved what we did, and they trusted us to build a browser, and they didn't think they would ever have to switch. And a lot of them are still using Opera 12, which is incredible given that that code is so old. And, and I mean, how can you be using three or four year old web browser? I mean, it hasn't been maintained for three, four, or five years. I mean, it's incredible that anyone would do that. But people are doing it, including me, uh, for mail still. Uh, and we've all but that's another story. So, so, I mean, there was the decision. Okay, there's all these people, they want something else. And the reality, there's a lot of other people that want something else, that think, okay, every browser out there is going for simplification. Every browser is going for the same user base. And I think if you think about it, all of us, we have different opinions on things. We, we like different things. We, we wear different clothes. We drive different cars. We decide to live in different parts of the world. There's a lot of things that we make decisions on. A lot of us spend more time on the web than anything else we do with a browser. So the one tool that we're using the most time with, we would not have an opinion on how it should work. I don't think so. I think there's a lot of people that think, OK, I would like this browser to work this way. I would like to have these kind of uh, shortcuts. I want the tabs on the left side because that's what I like. And I would like to be able to press uh, the active tab to make it um, to go to the last one that was active. I mean, people have a lot of strong opinions. And, and the thing is, not everyone wants the same thing. But the point is, enough people want just something. And, and again, the philosophy of what we do, we see the user. We adapt the user. Every user deserves attention. It's not like we're all kind of, we, we, we're all the same. We are the same, and I mean, we're, we're different and equal. That's kind of the way I like to, to view the world. We are all different. We are all equal. And that means that everyone deserves attention. And if you prefer to have, again, the tabs on the left, you get the tabs on the left. If you don't like to see your tabs, it's fine as well. It's your choice as a user how you'd like to interact with this product. And I, I think, in a way, that's the way software should be made. But at the very least, it's the way we are going to build our browser. So I guess a follow-up to that one would be, what's the most requested feature or features for um, there, There's a long list. There's a reason why we actually mentioned one that even isn't in 1.0, and that's mail. We just knew that people were going to ask for mail. So it's, it's on the list of things that's coming. But the reality, there's just a lot of details. And, and, and I mean, if you, you see the discussions that we are having with our users on the forums, and some will say, if I don't get a way to I want to middle click uh, speed dials to be able to put them uh, up in a background window. And if I don't get that, I'm never going to use this browser. <laughs> OK, well, let's, let's put that in place. And then we have one more happy user. There's just a lot of this. And this, this is different what people like. I mean, I, I have a lot of favorite features, and a lot of other people have them. I mean, in my case, uh, I think the idea of having a lot of tabs is useful. The tab stacking, which allows you to have a lot more tabs without being crowded, is useful. The ability to tile uh, tabs so you can have multiple uh, pages at the same time is useful. I think the, the panels are very, the way we've done web panels, where you just enter an address and, and, and it, it fits the panel if it can. I mean, a, a lot of pages, they fit to the mobile. And when we have them on a small screen, it, it, it just works. There's a lot of details like this. I'm using, I'm, I'm a very avid keyboard shortcut user. I think that's a great feature to be able to use the keyboard. I think a lot of us, we have this memory in our fingers. We just expect, you press that button, and it does something. And if it doesn't do that, there's something wrong. And the same applies to like mouse gestures that people love. You, you do the mouse gesture and you try to use it on the, on the browser and it doesn't work and you think, okay, there's something broken here. Uh, I guess I need to bring my PC and have it fixed. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, another feature thing uh, that's being more and more important is um, uh, synchronizing between devices. Is that a feature that's that, coming? That, yes, it's coming. It's on our list. We, we couldn't make it for the first version. I think it makes even more sense when you have mobile, but clearly also a lot of people have multiple PCs and would like to synchronize between them. It's one of those features that requires a fair amount of work and you need to get it right because you don't want to synchronize and lose data. 
it's something we've been working on, but we decided we wouldn't make it into 1.0. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, uh, uh, and so another feature, um, it's ad block. Um, suddenly um, ad blocking and how to generate revenue, for example, on my site, uh, is now on a lot of the technology um, uh, companies' hands uh, to figure out how to not be annoying, uh, mm -hmm. but to generate uh, revenue. Uh, what what are your position about uh, ad blocking? You know, ad -blocking? You, you know what th this is. This is a very complicated issue. Uh, the, that's the way I view it. Clearly, we are on the side of the user, and we'd like to make everything that we can for the user. On the other hand, we also see that if we take away all ads as a funding on the internet, that's a significant problem. And I think we would lose a lot of free sources of information, and we might see a balkanization of the internet as as a worst case scenario. So. We, we don't have an ad blocker built in. You can obviously download one if you like, but I, I think it's, 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 it's a tough one, this, uh, because I, I think we all agree there are ads out there that have no reason to be there. Mm. I think anyone that puts in an ad on their page where it tricks you to click something is wrong. But on the other hand, I also understand that uh, ads are a big part of uh, newspapers and, 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 and a lot of uh, sources of information on the internet which we would like to keep free. I think it would be a disaster if, if we didn't have all this free information. Uh, there's a discussion. Uh, some, some people believe that if you block everything, we'll see a new world and, and, and find different ways to work, make it work. If that's the case, that would be great that we can find a way where you don't have these kind of uh, ob um, obstructive ads. Uh, um, again, every browser built in an ad blocker uh, with regards to pop-ups, right? Yeah. And I think that's accepted because with pop-ups they went one step too far. Uh, sadly, they found ways to do pop-ups that are equally irritating in some cases, but it's a difficult one. And I don't think it's as simple as, okay, let's block all ads, because I think the, the, the consequence of that might be uh, quite negative. Yeah. Okay, so um, hmm. uh, let's talk about uh, startups and Silicon Valley. Um, what advice would you give to startups coming here or thinking about coming here? Well, I think the, the, the general thing to me is, is whatever you're doing, have a passion for it, right? I think, why are you doing what you're doing? If your answer is, okay, I, I think this is a good space, it's wrong answer. If the answer is something like, well, I think this is a way to make a lot of money, uh, uh, wrong answer. If you're, I mean, and I have this as well when you're talking, to, I've seen this with some of the startup presentations and like where the startups are forced to make a presentation where they say there's an exit in three years. The only way you're going to exit in three years is because you fail, right? Exit as in selling or? Yeah, I mean, I, I think realistically, if, you, if your plan is a three-year plan, mm. you're not going to be a world dominator in three years, right? So I think, think, think bigger. Obviously, you may be a world dominator in three years, and maybe you get sold, and that's fine. And, I, and again, I'm not saying it's totally wrong to build a company for sale or anything like that. But I just think if you're passionate about something, you're probably not wanting to sell in three years, right? You're wanting to take it further. And if someone wants to take your dream away, they better pay, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, I guess um, jumping a little bit back and forth, but uh, what's Vivaldi's business model? How are you? surviving so the business model we have is, is it's uh, it's through the affiliate deals that we do we include a search engine or actually multiple search engines that you can choose between and then we include a, a few other bookmarks we have a number of bookmarks included uh, most of them are not generating revenue for us but some are uh, the revenue for opera just in comparison is about a dollar per user per year so it's, it's a fairly simple calculation we need so and so many active users we clearly need to include the kind of functionality that people would like to see, and that's our focus. That the, the, the kind of services that we include are things that people see as features. This is what we do, did when we introduced uh, Search and Opera in 2001. Yeah. Uh, people very quickly saw that as a, as a feature and not as something else. But you can you can remove everything, right? Uh, in Vivaldi, if you don't want the yeah, bookmarks, you, you if you if you don't want any of it, you can just strip it away. I mean, you can go and you can remove all the bookmarks uh, that you want to remove. You can go in and uh, you can change the order of the the search. Uh, you can even go in and you can add your own. 
and which is a, a great little feature, by the way. You can go into a site that you use frequently, and you can add that search with uh, with also a key, so you can yeah. you, you can press a certain key, and then you can search. It's a great function, and very useful for those of us that have custom searches that we want to do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, interesting. Um, would you say it's harder for startups now than when you started, like? In 95, 94? No. I think actually at the time it was, it, it, I mean, I, I think there was, uh, startups didn't have a lot of attention. It was quite, I mean, I, I remember trying to uh, get funding for, for Opera in the early, I mean, it took us five years to get funding, right? It, it was really hard to- How did you survive? Uh, by saving, uh, by sometimes not paying salaries, uh, otherwise just being extremely prudent. Mm. And I think, I, I, again, we, had this view that, okay, we will have to make this work. We'll make this work. And if that means at times we're not really getting a lot of money or, or we're just getting by one way or another. We didn't spend any money on anything. I mean, uh, Rolf likes making this, uh, talking about this story when we had, uh, uh, there was an American company that wanted to buy us, right? Um, and uh, they asked us whether we could come over and we said, we have, we'll come after three months, right? And, and they ended up flying in their private jet. We went to the wrong airport because <laughs> we didn't realize that. I mean, it's, it, it, our focus was somewhere else. We, we were building a company for the future. We didn't have any money. No one wanted to give us money. No one thought we could succeed in any shape or form. Uh, a lot of people, for some reason, would just show up in the street and tell us how stupid we were to be building a browser. Uh, but it still worked, right? We, we, we managed to get the traction, and then suddenly we were in a place where we had made some choices that ended up being right. We decided, okay, yes, you can make a mobile browser. And again, we had it running on mobile devices as early as 1999 on the PDAs and the like. We were on phones shortly afterwards. Uh, the first deliveries on, PDA, uh, on, on pads, by the way, was 2000. And for many years thereafter, I was telling people, you know these pads are gonna happen. And people said, ah, who else would use a pad? I mean, what would you use that for? How many of you have a pad now? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, I mean, I, I think when you go into a project like this and you have the belief and you just continue going. Um, does Vivaldi, Vivaldi have any partners? Um, uh, for example, hardware or anything like that? No, it, it's just affiliate partners that are generating some revenue for us. I, I think our focus is really just building end user products. Uh, at Opera, we spend a lot of time building specialized versions. I don't really see us doing that with Google. You never know what will happen in the future, but uh, I, I think our focus really is, is, is about building a great end-user product and, and, and seeing that people will download it and use it. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, uh, are you afraid of uh, Vivaldi failing? And for, for what reason would that be, you think? I think, I mean, I have a lot of belief in what we are doing. I mean, the feedback we're getting is fantastic. So I believe that uh, people will use our product. On the other hand, I also think that we have to be prudent and we have to take nothing for granted and we'll have to work for every single user out there. So I, I think that's a given and I think you have to think that way, that th this is not going to be a walk in the park. Mm. On the other hand, the feedback is fantastic. People really love what we do. What other browsers do you use? I don't really use any other, I mean I test obviously, I mean I test the different browsers, so yeah, I'll, I have obviously <coughs> Edge installed on my computer and Saf I mean uh, Safari on my Mac, I have uh, Firefox, I have Chrome, and clearly I have Opera. And I continue to switch between Opera and Vivaldi on email, I'm not totally over to Vivaldi 100% yet, I uh, will be soon. Guys, in Iceland? <laughs> so they're working on it, uh, and by the way, it's a great team we have in, have in Iceland. Uh, that's one of the nice things about this, it's, it's being able to work and, and build things up in Iceland. Uh, that's fantastic, and obviously working with all the people that I've had the pleasure to work with before in, in, in Oslo. Uh, we're lucky in the way that we're getting all these former opera people that want to work with us again. It's a fantastic, and we even have a big bunch of volunteers. I mean, that's one of the special things about Vivaldi. There's so passionate people around us. So we have all these people that are doing things in their spare time, helping us test, helping us uh, 
go through our bug system and, and, and test bugs from others. Uh, uh, helping us communicate and help other users translate. I mean, we have 200 people helping us with translation. So we have 50 languages supported. It's, it's incredible. And, and it's also one of the things that I love doing this, and we all love doing this, is that when people are so passionate that they want to help you, you have to be doing something about it, right? Yeah. How many people do you have working uh, in Vivaldi now? So Vivaldi, we have 35 people. But in, in some ways, I mean, it feels like a much bigger company with all the, I, again, the more than 200 volunteers that are doing things for us. And obviously, the extremely uh, active community in, in general that is on Vivaldi.net. Uh, every time we send out a bill, there are thousands or tens of thousands of people that are downloading uh, e even snapshots, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's incredible. And uh, the communication around this, uh, and again, people go out of the way to tell their friends, they go out of the way to comment on websites. They, they're really passionate about this. They want us to succeed, and they're cheering us on. Have you, uh, what would you do if you hadn't been doing this? Would you be doing software or something completely different? I think in a way, what, what, I, what I was thinking there for a while is, okay, can I be on the other side? I, I really love working with startups. So I mean, I, I did. Uh, I invested in a number of startups. I invested in, in, in We Want to Know in, in, in Norway. I invested in a, a number of companies in Iceland. I'm in the Founders Fund in, in Oslo, so investing through them in startups in, in, in Norway. So I mean, working with startups is something that I'm really passionate about. And, and the things that we've been doing with Innovation House is, is about supporting them. There is no business in it, to be frank. Uh, we are having our, our uh, office in, in Iceland, uh, and, and, and in some ways, it, it, it's about providing what I missed myself. Was okay. Is there a place I can go where I can just be, right? Yeah, in anti five. Yeah, and uh, th th where there's kind of th where there's no strings attached. I can just go in, and I can I can I can rent a little bit of an office. There's no stake in the company. It's it's not expensive. Things like that. So that mattered. And that's the one that we did in Iceland. And the one we did in, in Magnolia is more about helping uh, startups from Norway and Iceland in particular, but also from, from Scandinavia that are considering doing things in the US. And I think for Opera, it was really difficult to get going in the US and understanding things. So being able to go to a friendly place, mm. which is the same as here, except uh, that our little place in Magnolia is a, is a mansion from 1880 with 18 bedrooms. So we actually host our people. So there's a slight difference, but I think we are thinking about doing the same. We are thinking about helping startups, but in our case, it, it, it's really about just, it's, it's a friendly place to go to, and there's not much more to it. Yeah, yeah, contacts. It's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 we, we, we don't want to be an in, a, a real incubator. We don't, I mean, we, we just want to be friendly. We want to help people. We, 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 we've been there ourselves, and, and we feel for anyone that's building a company. And, I think it's great that people are going out of the way to build companies. I think it's uh, that people have this passion, and I think we all, we all, all of us that share this passion about going out and doing something. Uh, again, it's a it's a common passion, and, and we're trying to do our little bit to to help through Innovation House. So, what's the contact info for, for Magnolia for those who are? Um, I mean, just just go to innovationhouse.is or .net, and and there all the information is there. Okay, perfect. Um, General question: uh, What companies do you admire? Um, I mean, there's there, there's a lot. Uh, that's, that's a that's a that's any model for model for you all day. Like no, I mean, in some ways, we've been trying to do our own thing. And the reality is, I don't think I uh, have any, any better person than say Anne. I mean, Anne and worked with me at Opera. I think we did a great job of, of uh, how to deal with people with different backgrounds. I mean, we had people from like 50 countries coming to Norway to work. And so dealing with that is a very complicated issue. So mm -hmm. how you deal with uh, employees, how you make sure you have a good working environment, that's very important. And that's what we've been building in Norway, uh, in, in Iceland, and, and in the US. It's, there's, a, there's a lot of that. So I, I think I admire when people do that kind of stuff. And we are trying to, to be better than, than anyone else at that, um, at Vivaldi. Great. Thank you. Thank that's you. the question I have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Thank any, any very, any quick question to the. <coughs>
our guests here before we continue with the program? Anything quickly? Anyone? I mean, they're still here, so... Yeah, we'll just continue. You turn off the recording? Okay, cool. Well, uh, let's see. This